she made for the skins game last year. Yeah? Yes, so uh, she's not a not quite a stranger to to this type of bowling as some of the others might be. We have a couple other new ones in this year. Mary Jo is not a stranger to the alleys anyway. She's employed here. And uh, has improved her bowling immensely over the last two or three years. It certainly makes a difference when you have the opportunity to work at it a little, a little more, and, and Mary Jo certainly has done that. Uh, she currently bowls in four leagues. She has a current average of 112, a career high single of 171, and a career high triple of 403, she, which gives her one game in the 400s. Yeah, she had a 400 this year. Uh, four, what, four, I got it written down here somewhere. 403. Yes. And uh, she has three, uh, 15 games over the 360 mark, which has put her on the board up there for over for 15 times, which is uh, quite a quite an accomplishment for her. Yeah, there's only been four 400 amongst the ladies since President Wayne's Open 35, 40 years ago, and we've had three of them this year. That shows you the caliber of bowling that we're getting here at Brunswick Lanes. Well, bowling has improved a lot over the years. So certainly has. Mary Jo qualified for this tournament with a 309. And it starts off with a 10 and a 9. Our next bowler is Lisa McKay. Lisa's been bowling for 24 years and currently bowls in two leagues. She has a current average of 110 with a career high single of 151 and a career high triple of 388. She's had 25 plus games over the 360 mark and qualified for this tournament with 350. And she's one of the few left-handers around. Very accurate bowler. She is so, and it, uh, if memory serves me correctly, she did quite well in last year's tournament as well, I think. She was in the final four in the skins game. Oh, nice shot. Left the nine pin standing. Pin come close to the, coming off the side there to take that pin. Yeah, she was one of the, the final four last year. And she starts off with a 10. In fact, in the uh, skins game of last year, she uh, bowled a 321 to come in second, and she won $340. I guess when you come second, that's the important part, don't that, it? That certainly is, yes. We'd like to uh, extend a, a welcome to our new sponsor this year, Usher's Furniture, who has uh, taken over the sponsorship of the ladies' tournament this year, and uh, we're certainly happy to have them on board, and it's uh, nice to get uh, some new blood into the tournaments. Well, it, I think it kind of shows that uh, what's going out over Cable 5 television in the, in the way of bowling here in Yarmouth is popular. And not only do the sponsors uh, enjoy it, but uh, we have a lot of fans out there that are enjoying uh, Keep asking, when are you going to start bowling again? When are you going to have bowling again this year? And uh, to have sponsors come along, too, that's even a, a bonus for us. It certainly is. And, uh, and as you say, I know I've, I've stopped every day of the week, uh, people asking when we were going to start the tournament. So that's, it's encouraging to see that kind of response. This is a new bowler here, Rhonda Olson. Rhonda has only been bowling for three years, and she currently bowls in one league. She has a current average of 100, with a career high single of 124, and a career high triple of 320. She qualified for this tournament with 315. Well, she bowled well under the pressure then. Uh, and she drops one off the left there, so it has to be started off with a six. And again, you know, it's, I think it might be a little intimidating. You're up there all by yourself in these tournaments. You've got the cameras and the lights on you. And she's only been bowling for three years. It's probably take a couple hours to settle in and get used to the different, different type of bowling that they have to do here. Might uh, add here, too, if there's some new fans who aren't familiar with how this format was set up, uh, the ladies had a chance to come in and qualify to be one of the top 16 bowlers on this program. And there were a total of 26 who uh, came in and bowled their three games. And that was a good 10. And I, I think that number is up from the qualifying numbers of last year, if I'm not mistaken. By a few, yeah, very yeah. few, I think, yeah. But it, they're, they're latecomers. Uh, yeah, that's it was right. Late up until, uh, I think, two days or three days before the deadline. 
that uh, they still only had about eight on the list. And then I think on the Saturday, nine ladies came in and uh, they got up to 26. And you could qualify more than once. Uh, if you didn't like your score, you could put your 20 bucks in the pot, another $20, and uh, try again. Try again, that's right. Our, our fourth bowler of the day is Rose Dowsett. Rose has been bowling for 31 years. She currently bowls in three leagues and has a current average of 105.6. Her career high single was 162 with a career high triple of 384. And she starts off with a seven. She's had 20 games in the 360, over the 360 mark and qualified for this tournament with a 305. ball, a uh, good hook. Uh, when she's on her game, that ball going into the pocket, it uh, knocks a lot of pins down for her. She's got a tough one there. That did would make it uh, the right. She did this, she got off two pair to the right of it and just took the back pin out. Now she's got the five and the seven. And this is Rose's second year of bowling in this tournament as well. We have a fair amount of new bowlers in the tournament this year because, uh, that have qualified. Yeah, I was, uh, I thought I had it down here, but uh, we can talk about it as we go along anyway. But there are quite a few new bowlers here. There we go, the free, what we call a free swinger up there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she just lets drive and she has good control, a lot of stuff on the ball. She doesn't take a lot of time in between the bowling either. She's very deliberate. She gets up there, she knows exactly where she wants to put that ball and lets it go right away. And she has a seven for 26 on three. Take a little while to get the first mark. That's a good ball right in that one three pocket. Another little, yeah, uh, another little thing that we've added to the tournament this year that uh, the girls can shoot for is Ushers has put up a 27-inch color television for grabs for anybody that gets four strikes in a row this year. So, well, that's not an impossibility. No, it certainly isn't with the caliber of bowlers that we have. And Mary Jo has 34 after four. But again, it's, it's a nice thing. It's a nice gesture mm. by Ushers, our sponsor, and uh, who is also sponsoring the tournament. So um, it's there for the taking. If anybody's getting a good game on the way, they, they've got that possibility of picking up a brand new television as well. And you don't always have to be on the head pin to get a strike either. That's there. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the place to be, but... Uh, Pins have a habit of sliding and falling around a little bit now and then. So she's got a shot there. She gets out of the left hand end of that wood right there. Oh, just went behind that five pin. Good shot, you on it. And has another pin for 29. Use the dead wood as a guide to guide that ball right in on that pin. Yeah, if you have a shot like that, if you're going to miss it, you want to miss it to the, the dead wood side of it. And, uh, you never know, the will fly around, the ball will take off. Kind of a guide, as you said. I also like to remind the people that are watching that these girls, for the two of them will advance into the next round from this week, and uh, there's money involved for every time they, they uh, advance. There's money involved for uh, strikes and spares. Uh, double strikes, I think it is, and three spares. Three spares in a row, yeah. So um, there's money to be made all Four. through this tournament for all the participants. It's just like three marks in a row. It doesn't have to be three spares. It could be three marks in a row. Yes, that's right. It, it is. And yeah. I did say three spares. I meant to say three marks. So Lisa starts off with two nines and two tens for 38. Mary Jo is 34. Head pin. Leaves the right hand corner pin, number 10. Now she could play that slanted wood, uh, the one that's got an angle to it right on the red. It would go right sliding right over there. She's not sure of that corner pin. She's going right down after the pin. Ooh, <laughs> she could have stolen it that way too. She hit the nose a bit, but not strong enough. But 
you had two shots there. It depends on the bowler. You know, if that corner pin is your best pin, then uh, the dead wood would have been a good shot. So she picks a nine for 25. Rhonda also throws a ball, a pretty fast ball down there. More and more, too, the bowlers are uh, buying their own set of uh, bowling balls. A hit pin on that one. And uh, you look on the rack nowadays, and you don't see too many house balls out there. They're that's all different colors, different weights. And, and that's, uh, that's nice, too, because it gives them a chance to get used to a consistent ball. They, it doesn't change well, in weight. Well, weight and size makes a difference. Uh, you can pick up a, a 2.7, and next you can pick up a 2.5. 2 pounds, 5 ounces, that is. It makes a difference in how you throw it. It's a good break off the hit pin. Leaves the one, two, ten. She can split the front two or probably stay on the outside. The ball could go over to the right hand corner. Just like to mention some of the things that's going on at the Brunswick Lanes here this summer. In June, July, and August, through the regular open hour period, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it's all you can bowl for five dollars plus taxes, and that's uh, quite a quite a deal for anybody that wants to come in and uh, improve on their game or even just get started in the game. Get a couple more the way they did one. <clears throat> she's got a shot there, put on that head pin now, and uh, she stays on the, right on the head pin or a little bit of the right, the uh, dead wood straighten out and go back. Yeah. Looked like it should have went. Good try, yeah. I neglected to say this all you can bowl is on, uh, again, uh, you know, it's. Uh, it, the people are here, Mary Jo, Steve, and Albert, they're here to help anybody that might come in that are new to the game and uh, need some instructions or some advice. These, these people are always here and more than willing to help them out. The ball right in the pocket, left the extra pin. So she's got the two, four, seven, and the six. She's going to have to split those three. Still waiting for our first mark. That's a good line. So 43 on five for Mary Jo. Also this summer on Thursday evenings from 7 to 10 p.m. is Moonlight Bowling with a progressive looming jar that's uh, in effect. Special draw on the last week of the bowling for all those who participate in the Looney Jar and uh, gives them a chance to win some nice prizes. Get on it. Yeah, four pins. Those are things that happen when you're when you're struggling a little bit. You're not going on the head pin, and you finally get a ball in there, and you're going to leave one pin. And she pins the pin. So Mary Jo has 53 on six. Throws a cross alley ball that breaks back into the pin. Very slow ball, and uh, I think when her ball, because of the lack of a lot of speed, gets on the wrong side of the head or the opposite side, like it did in there, it tends to uh, splatter the pins out and leave them uh, more bad breaks. I guess is the way to say it. Uh, it was a good it was a head pin hit, but I think she'd like to be going into the head pin on the one two side. It's a good nine. I noticed when she was doing her warm-up, she was getting some really good breaks, and she was saying at that time that she's got to stop because she wanted to save them for the game. <laughs> oh, they're going to come. You say she's consistent. She's had all nines and tens on the first five, and she's been right there, right, 
either on or close. Right back see, on that. On the, yeah, yeah, she's on the off. To me, she's on the off side of it, and it takes the power away from the ball. And you can see what it left there. It left her the four and the seven, the five and the ten. Uh, she's probably going to have to get right on the nose of that left hand dead wood. The, the wood would go back and take those two, and the ball would take off and go. She's going to be close, you know. Once she hits that head pin on that side with that type of ball, the ball has a tendency to, to veer away from the pins as yeah. opposed to going through and into the pins. It takes, it takes the power away from her ball. It's a good nine. And Lisa has 56 on six. So she only dropped four pins in the first half of the game. Now Rhonda needs a mark to get back up with the girls. One, three, ten. The wood. Well, it could come into play if the ball went through. Uh, the wood could carry the ball right down. And she leaves the head pin. And a nine for forty. on the other side of the alley just a few minutes ago. Let us split those three. Has a tendency to shove that head pin back as opposed to moving it off to the side a little bit when she hits like that. Well, I guess that's what we would call a punch. And a seven for 47. With a good couple good alleys, going to put her right back. There she gets a lot of slash that time, and leaves the one two. And you good break. Two ways of getting that one: you get the head pin on the outside, or you split them. And the split is the best, of course. Oh. Whoops! Good die to the right. Tried to the outside of that pin in that that time. The ball went there anyway, whether she tried or not. <laughs> At least that's what it looked like she did. There it is. And again, on the outside of that head pin to clean those off. There's always a chance you get on the outside of the head, you can flip the pin off and leave the back one, so that's why I say the split is, is the best shot. When you're sure that the ball is right between the two of them. That's the closest we've had to a mark, I think, so far, Bruce. She's got the six pin in the dead wood, so she should be able to hit on, on the board, she'll be all right. Ah. Oh, boy. She <laughs> just barely touched so, that dead wood. Little body language there helped it. There's our first mark. So after six, Mary Jo, uh, 53, Lisa McKay, 56, Rhonda Olson, 47, and Rose Dubs at 54. What's the mark ready for us? Maybe that'll get the girls started now on the first mark up there. They know they have to settle down now. Nice ball, nice ball. There it is. Nice ball. The second ball right in the pocket, right where you want it. They realize they gotta get serious now. <laughs> She could have punched two just easily done. She's got seven on her mark. Looked her up to up the par, 70 on seven. And she's got the one, two, four. And again, you want to split that. Right there. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, she split it <laughs> and left the horp in. That's kind of a tough break, that is, because you're right there on your shot. Stay straight with it for a 10 for 80. Could have had two in a row. For anybody just tuning in, we're in the week one of the Ladies Candle Pin Challenge coming to you from Brunswick Lanes and brought to you by Usher's Furniture. Really pleased to have them on board this year and uh, they've, it's nice to see. It's nice to have that kind of response from the community. Well, Donnie's been involved in sports over the last few years. I know he's involved in minor baseball. 
also very active in the hockey, the hockey as well. So uh, I I've know. Had, excuse me. Go ahead. I know that he's a, a very avid sports fan, and he was really pleased to have a chance to uh, come on board and, and sponsor this this tournament. I've had some dealings with him too, with the Sports Heritage Association, and uh, he's been very generous uh, with his money, and uh, we were glad to have him on our side too. Oh, boy. Okay, she got a break. That pin in the gutter, I think, tipped the left-hand corner pin and knocked it over. So now she's got the eighth pin left there. So that's for her spare shot. And this is for Lisa's first mark of the game as well. Looks good. She's right on it. She's very, right on it. Very active bowler. Certainly is. So Lisa has 74 on eight and a spare open. We also should mention, Bruce, that uh, thank you to Brunswick Lanes for allowing us to be here and use the facilities to bring this tournament, and to Eastlink for uh, being here. And without them, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible. You just wouldn't be watching this tournament. So to both of those people, uh, we want to say thank nice you. Nice shot. Nice there. And the girls are starting to open this up yeah, a little we'll get here, some Bruce. black marks up there now and looking better. <laughs> Yeah, we should thank Steve for clearing away all the snow to let us in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. And, uh, the, the staff here is just excellent. Uh, anything that we need or uh, want, uh, they just, uh, it's just a matter of asking and it's at our fingertips. So that's great to have. So Rosa picks up three on her spare. Gives her 60 on seven. And she's got the one, two, nine. Piece of wood rolling in the back. A little bit. Right on it, a nice 10. And Rhonda has 70 on 8. Now Rose has a spare open for her. She's 54 plus in the 6. Off that head, this is a nice 8. While we're in the process of thanking people, we should be remember to thank Peter Muse and all his crew for the fine job that they do They're in here hours ahead of us and setting everything up to get ready for this. That spare was set up pretty good for her. She had the head pin and left hand corner pin with a nice flat dead wood in between there. So all you had to do was get on the head pin again, and she did. Now Rose has two marks in a row. Right back in that pocket, real nice, and real nice set up nice for her and this could be the first bonus money mm, big nine on that spare gives her 81 on seven left hand corner pin wide open right on it right on it right on it and there's your first bonus money clip there's the first bonus money three marks in a row for rose so after eight mary joe is par with 80 lisa mckay 74 and open with a spare ronda olsen 70 and Rose goes at 91, and a spare weight for her. And Mary Jo right back in there with a good hit and leaving the 4 7. Would move a little bit, but it's not going to hurt her. Far enough away. Right on it, there it is. Just took a little time to get used to the alleys. There's <laughs> <laughs> a whole new ball game up there, like where they're bowling today. Normally, you got bowlers around you and a lot, of, a lot of your teammates hollering. In this type of a tournament, you're up there alone. You're under the lights, cameras pointed at you from all directions, us sitting here talking about them. So <laughs> there's nine on her spare, gives her 99 and nine. And in there and oh just slid by to the left also told the girls that we would say nice things about them too that we wouldn't say anything well what nasty. else is there to say uh, that's that's what i told them uh, not to be nervous that we had nothing bad to say about them and mary Jo does 108 for her first game now lisa is 74 and she's got a spare one for her And goes through the middle. And there's Six an four. example of that punch that we were talking about earlier. 
This is where you have to pin. You take, uh, I guess you take the easy three first. Everybody seems to have their own favorite side that they will work on first as opposed to the other side. Well, you, you still got a chance for a spare shot on those if you get your ball working, get it in the pocket where you want it there. That's what I mean right there. She went after those three and uh, came up with a good nine. So Lisa's 87 on nine. She could stand the mark right now to get her back up close to Mary Jo. Of the four, only two are going to uh, advance. This is a two-game series total pinfall that right, yep. allows them to advance into the next round. She's got a, let's see, the three and the ten. She's got a, a wood in front, a wood in back. And probably she could go way down to the right end end of the dead wood and take them both or stay up high. Oh, that's. So it's afraid it's a of up there, high. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I think probably the better of the two shots was down low, where you you hit the deadwood that would flip the front pin, and then you're right on that uh, corner pin. So she takes a, <coughs> excuse me, a nine for 96. And that's all right, you're still in the running with you're, you're right up there. <coughs> Here's Rhonda, she's got 70 on eight. Well over there, she seemed to hang on to it just a little longer than watch during her warm-up, and that uh, seems to be affecting her accuracy a little. Yeah, she throws a pretty good ball out there for not a very big lady. And a seven for 77. Oh, a big mark here wouldn't hurt her at all. fade away a little bit to the right at times. And, uh, she's got the one, two, ten. Oh, right there. Just a little bit more solid on that head pin. And just a little too thin. And a nine for 86. So Rhonda will come on in the second game and do better, I'm sure. Now Rose. She's got three marks in a row. She's 91, 11 over par. Open night now with a score. Right back in that pocket again. Picks up six more. 97. Well, she's going to get down there to the right. <clears throat> I think down just a little too far away. It might have even been better to hit the pins first rather than the dead wood. And a good nine for 106. One box to go. Well, we're just wrapping up the first game of week one. Ladies candle pin shot here at Rutland Plains. You're watching East Link Community Television, and Bruce, I think we're going to go down to another burn burner, perhaps. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> We've had some excellent bowling in the past here, uh, where it's always been down to the last few before we decide who's going to advance. And an eight for 114, so a nice game for Rose. <coughs> So after our first game, Mary Jo Dowsett, 108, Lisa McKay, 96, Rhonda Olson, 86, and Rose Dowsett, 114. Uh, Rose had three spares in the sixth, seventh, and eighth frames, so she picked up $5 bonus money. And uh, well, Rhonda and Lisa both had one spare, and Mary Jo had two. So we haven't seen a strike yet. But uh, we only have they, 18 pins separating all four bowlers, so it, it's still. Uh, they didn't start marking until the seventh frame, so it took them a little while to get used to. And uh, you know, now they're in the second game. There, I think we'll see better, better bowling in the second game now. So Mary Jo is going to start our second game for us. I might add here too, while Mary Jo is up there, our last year champ Patricia Pirro, 
uh, wasn't able to uh, come in and uh, qualify. Uh, she didn't uh, participate this year, so we're going to have a new champ for that this year, that's for sure. And not only that, we're nice the chair. Nice chair. Very nice. I'm told that during the qualifying, it came down to for the last two spots, we had three people tie for it and had to have a roll off just to find their last two bowlers for that's, this tournament. That's right. That's, we're in here, uh, I think Saturday afternoon, or no, uh, one of the evenings, probably uh, Thursday night, I think it was, they were in the three of them. Uh, and I looked and the score was up on the board there, it said sudden death. And I said, what's going on? So, so. Mary Jo picks up four on her spare. So again, uh, you know, even just even in the qualifying, we have that cl close of, of uh, caliber of bowling. So, and she takes a five and ends up with 19 after two. Oh, no, spare didn't help too much. She off the hip in both times that time. So, in fact, she had the same break, but on either on each side of the alley. Uh, here's Lisa. Better if that pin had stayed up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yeah. she would have liked that. A Probably wants more. to get on the nose of that point at Deadwood. Right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See how slow that ball was moving through there. I think perhaps a little harder ball <coughs> just might have accomplished what she was trying there. Well, there's a good chance, too. If she tried to throw harder, she'd lose her control. She, she bowls a nice, accurate ball, uh, quite slow. There's good stuff on it. You can see the ball breaks. So this is her style, and she's bowled that way ever since I've seen Lisa bowl. And uh, you can't knock her scores. I mean, she's always right up there with the best. And as you say, she's only one of four to ever hit the 400 here at the lane. So. She hasn't got much of a, a shot down there. Uh, she's got the six pin and the seven pin. You probably got to go way over to the right to the six pin and, and hope you can move the pin and that head with this laying there in the middle. She's getting down there good. Okay, it didn't, it didn't take that pin. It's still laying there. That was a tough shot. Very little room for making a square there. She's right there for a good 10. So she continues to pin. And that's keeping her in the in the hunt <coughs> for the, to advance. Now Rhonda, she's gonna have some marks to get back in the ball game here. Noticed uh, at the end of that first game, I said it was 18 pins separating all the bowlers. But what I meant was there was 18 pins separating the top three. That's a good pin. 28 pins between the from the bottom to the top on that first game. So that's not a big big difference there. Uh, it is certainly able to, uh, to overcome that. She got the ball in there in the pocket that time and left the three down. There she is. That's the ball she wanted before. <laughs> so Rhonda starts off with a 20. Our first game leader, Rose Dowsett. Rose always seems to bowl better under pressure. She <laughs> likes to have that pressure. I've bowled with Rose a bit and against her. Some of the mixed leagues. She's a competitor. Certainly is. I, I've done the same bowl in the leagues where she's bowled and um, whether she's bowling against another woman or a man, it doesn't make any difference. She's up there and she's competing and, and working real hard and makes most men work real hard to get by her. Sure, sure, nice ball. 
So there's it out there, and a good spin on it. Usually a very accurate ball. Shook it a little bit, but unable to take it down. Good ball. It's hard when you you got the pin, the pin over to the left, and you got a whole bunch there. You get it in the pocket, and uh, you don't you get them in the pocket. You don't always get a strike on your first ball with a good ball like that. And it's hard to get them all for a spare shot. So she takes her ten for nineteen. So after two in the second game, it's nineteen, nineteen, twenty, and nineteen. break away from this pack if they want to get back in there for that chance to advance. Mary Jo had been off the hip in all three boxes this game. So. She's an explosive bowler. She can go along and have some problems for a while. Oh, that went right between those two pins. <laughs> that did what didn't do a lot of good bouncing around down there. You could have had a nine just as easy as not, but the angle that came off the wall there, it uh, went right in. As we mentioned in previous years, that, uh, those bumper pads down there on the side sure help a lot, too, to keep those pins bouncing and jumping. Might not seem possible that a pin could go through. You're looking at it from up here, but uh, 12 inches between the pins. Pin is about 15 and three quarter inches long, and there's a 12 inch space between the pins, so there's plenty of room for something to go through there. The pin isn't laying perfectly flat when it comes back. There's, a, as you say, there's a lot of room for it. Notice in the lineup this year for the this tournament, we we have uh, more of the YBC uh, bowlers in our in our tournament again this year. Yes, there are a few there. I think uh, next week, uh, Vanessa is there. Uh, Who went down to the finals last yes, year. Yes, she was there. Uh, we'll have some things to say about her when she comes in. Oh, nice try. It's not an easy shot. That's the one pin and the eight pin, and you've got to hit it just right for it to go back on the eight. And it went off to the left there. And for now, and she continues to pin. 29 on three. I like the way she's on that hip. And she drops that thing out there. And as I said, we've said all along, it's a very slow ball, but she's so accurate with that first ball. Doesn't always get good breaks, but she's right there. If you continue to hit that head pin and in the pocket, you're going to get the breaks. Nice try. Left the five pin. Another strong competitor. Very quietly, she is. And she has 39 on four. Rhonda started off a little better than she did her first game. She's got a couple of ten. Hey, there's a big ball. Wood moving around. Pin wiggles a little bit. She wants to wait for that big wood to stop. It could be tricky. There, it hits the lip and swings right around flat. So uh, she's got to stay to the, the right of that dead wood or right on the pin. Oh, she's had a couple of chances for single pin spares there. She's just slid by. And again, just to the right. I think she talked to herself a little bit on that one, Bruce. Yeah, she probably figured she had had two strikes, and she could have, just as <laughs> as not. And another one. And that leaves the, the four in a row, the one, three, six, ten. Still moving. Right 
there. There, there it goes. is. There it goes. And we're on this gutter sphere. A little slow going, but uh, the pins just collapse at the bottom and go back toward the, the pit. She's able to pick up her spare. It's a good spot if you're off the head pin, get down on that three pin or down on the six pin down there and leave a mess. And, uh, and uh, looking at the monitor, she's got one pin that's rolling out of there now. She'd be better off if that kept on going. She's wide open there. She can blast that thing through, I think, if she gets in there. There it goes. Like she did. That one needed a little bit of power behind it to, to push everything back. Guess it's a good flat day. And she picks up six. She used the one, three, six, and the seven. So that gives her a 35 on three. See how she played that one? Uh, well played. It was on the outside. Uh, I'm not sure whether she played the split or it's hard to say, but she did get it on the outside. The ball takes off and goes right over there in the corner. Good spare, and it's two in a row for her. After four, Mary Jo is 34, Lisa is 39, Rhonda is 39 and open. And Rose is 45 and open, and Mary Jo has her second spare of the game. Oh, a lot of stuff on that ball. Left her the 1 3, big E. 52 on 5. I'm gonna get back on the hip pin. There it is. I got it. And that's what we mean by a split hit. Put the ball right between the two. And I said earlier that uh, Mary Jo is kind of an explosive bowler. She can go along and like she had a spare with four on it, five, then a seven, then an eight, and then bang, bang, two spares. And that's the way she bowls. Working for her. <laughs> Slow it may be, but does some good things down there. Ah, she's got a tough shot. She's got to get right on the nose of that good one, drive it back. And I believe she's there. Yes, she yeah. is. I came off the wall, but she had to get on the nose to push it back. And they pushed it over to the side and uh, came back on the plate and put the left hand corner for her. That was a good spare, Felicia. <coughs> Another Picked example of being a little thin on that head pin. Five on it. Let's get the two, four, five, and eight, and way over in the corner of the ten pin. That's a tough little spear, that little group of four there. And a good nine. Sixty-three. Rhonda has a spare working for her. She's only dropped one pin in the first four boxes. 39 plus. Picks up four. Gives her 43. Oh, good, good punch there. You don't want to hit pin right now. Do some damage there. A little pin, just a little pin. For 10. She's got to come from quite far back, so she's going to need some marks in the second half of the game. There's a good ball. There's a good ball. Could have been, should have been. Should have been. <laughs> <laughs> she needs another single pin. 
And it's nothing like cleaning the plate. <laughs> <laughs> this one's right in the middle of the alley, so well, she's having trouble with single pins. It's a shame, but she's had, I think, three of them. She can certainly use them. And a pin. So easy on the third ball. Oh. All oh, a whole different ball game. <laughs> yeah, Rose Dosett, 45 and open on the board. Second game, week one. Just a bit off the head, but picks up a good seven. 52. And she's got the one, two, seven. Good split hit or outside. Split hit would be good. speed that, uh, that some bowlers have that helps get that extra pin. Mary Jo is on a square right now, down off to the right, leaves the 179, there's wood in there, so she picks up seven on her mark, gives her 69 on six. Gotta get on that hit pin, drive everything back. A couple pieces of wood in behind there. Oh, I'll get away from her. That's the shot. She won it. Again, so easy on the third one. <laughs> yeah, she just uh, might have overthrown the ball. Uh, sometimes you tend to throw a little harder at a shot like that. You don't need to. You just keep the same speed, same style, and you're a lot better off. Good eight pin break. Five and the nine appears to be wide open. She's got to get on that five pin. Got a good guide there with Deadwood pointing at her. She really doesn't want to touch it though. Well, <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> but again, heading the, on the nose just shoved it back right into everything. But if a shot is open like that, that's the shot you want to take. I'm sure that she was probably trying for that open shot because uh, you take your chances with Deadwoods. But in that case, the Deadwood came <laughs> into play and saved the shot for her. She probably took a deep breath out there when she saw where the ball was going. <laughs> well, Lisa. Again, leaving that extra pin. Nice try. Good ten. And we're coming down to the crunch, and the, the two leaders are, are leading the way again in the, in the second game. So Lisa and Rhonda have got to get cracking real quick if they want to get back in the ring. Here. back about 18 pins behind Mary Jo for that second spot. You can see the mess she's got there. She's got that group of five, which wouldn't be too bad. But then she's got that corner pin over there on the other side. And that seems to be something that's plagued her all through yeah. both of these games. She tends to leave that extra pin. Whoops. And a six for 69. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. 79. I was giving Rhonda a six. I hope I didn't jinx her. <laughs> Rhonda has 
has struggled a little bit with these two games, trying to find that head pin. She's, and then when she has, she's always seemed to leave a one pin standing. So. She struggled a little bit today, but it's been nice to have her here, and it's nice to have all these new bowlers yep. coming into this tournament. New faces are great. Uh, once the girls get uh, used to this, I think we'll see. We'll continue to see more. I mean, the men's have been going on. This will be our sixth year when we do the men's. This is only the second year for the ladies, so uh, they got to get used to it yet. And they come in or they watch it on television and say, "Well, gee, I, I should go in that. That would be fun, you know." So, and that's what it's all about: fun. And we had one bowler who came in this year with her daughter who. Uh, just so that they would be enough qu to qualify for this tournament and ended up uh, making it into the tournament. So uh, just shows you that uh, all you got to do is have a good game at the right time. Uh, Roseanne's got the strike one the board. She breaks it back on that head pin. Oh, she wants one of those. Oh. But she's that got a shot there. Uh, looking at it here, I think I'd be inclined to get down to the left and use the left one. It's got a better angle. Where she's going, oh, but she had to she get had on the, to hit that the other side of the of the pin and move that dead wood across there. It would have to move two woods. So she picks up a good nine on the strike and a nine on the alley. So it gives her 89 on seven. And for those that weren't watching that close, uh, <coughs> that ball did go into the into the gutter before it uh, got yeah. to the pin and then took the pin. And that doesn't count. No, a back ball, if it hits legal wood or in, on the way down and comes back and knocks it down his league, it's good. Uh, which wasn't the thing way back, because he had pin ball. Nice ball. That's a five pin. But in that case, the ball went in the gutter first and hit wood and, and uh, knocked the pin down, so it wouldn't count. But uh, if it hit legal wood, it would count. And she has a nine for 98. So after eight in the second game, Mary Jo, 89 and open with a spare. Lisa McKay, 79. Rhonda Olson, 80. And Rose Dowsett, 98. So as I said, the two first game leaders are leading the way in the second game also. And Mary Jo's open right here. Picks up five on the spare. Gives her 94 on eight. And throughout this first week, we've been thanking all the people that have sponsored this, like Ushers and uh, East Link for being here and bringing it to the people, for Brunswick Lanes for supplying the, the lanes for us to have this tournament. We'd like to mention to the people, when you're going by Ushers, stop in, talk to Donnie or Larry and tell them how much you've enjoyed this bowling and uh, to thank them for their participation. She's got a 10 out of that. There's an example of hitting that dead wood out the front, moving it around, and it being a legal, legal shot. I'm not <laughs> sure how far out that dead wood was. <laughs> it's a little hard to see that line. There is a line down there where dead wood should be removed. Uh, you can almost see it right there, Bruce. I think, or is that just a shadow from the overhead rail? The dead wood line is two feet from the center of the head pin, so it's just out there, just out there a little bit. And, uh, if it's out, if it's touching the line or out beyond it, then the, the deadwood should come out. Uh, again, I don't know how far that one was out, but Mary Jo did anyway. And, uh, picks up a 10 for 114 and a two-game total of 222. So she averaged 111 for her first week. Now Lisa, Lisa needs a couple of marks here. Might add here too that these girls are, are paired off in groups of four. Uh, when they get the 16 qualifiers, their names are all put in a hat and they're drawn out. Now she should be going way out to the right there, a little further than that. No, didn't quite get out far enough. No. Uh, the names are put in a hat and drawn, and this is how the pairings are made up. So the girls don't know who they're bowling with or against until it's put on the board up here. Lisa has 89 on 9. 
And in some cases, that can mean an advancement or not advancing, well, depending you, on who you get paired up against. You get into a group with, with some good bowlers, which uh, you have here. Well, they're all good bowlers, or they wouldn't be here. But uh, there are places you would rather be, I think, <laughs> rather, not bowl against a certain person right early. And that can be an, an intimidation, you know, to... Um, oh, yeah. We play tricks in the mind. Oh, gee, I wish I didn't have to bowl him or her this early. And an 8 to 97. And a two-game total of 193. So it appears already that Lisa isn't going to be able to advance this year. Deadwood up against the four, so on that hit pin, you should be able to take all three of those. There it is. Honda's not going to go down without a fight. She's going to hang yeah, tough right till the last frame. The first game kind of hurt her, and uh, as this was her first tournament, it uh, could have been a little nerves on her part. Uh, she wasn't that accurate, but she picked up a good eight on that spear. Over 100 this game, so that's a lot better. I'm sure we'll see more of of Rhonda in in years to come. I hope so. She's a new bowler. She's only been bowling three years. Uh, so Rhonda ends up with 107 her second game for a two game total of 193. So. Lisa McKay and Ron Olson both have 193. And Rose is 98 on the eighth, 114 her first game. She's 212 at this minute, so it's going to be Mary Jo Dosett and Rose Dosett who uh, advance to the next round. And some of the, some of the in past years people would say now is the pins are just for the bragging rights to see who comes out in first <laughs> place of the four. There. there was what we were talking about, the back ball. Yeah. The ball went into the pit, came back, because it hit something on the plate going through and came back. It's legal, so she gets a 10 for that. Which has been a new rule changing over the years. If, uh, well, since they put pin setters in, yeah. Uh, they can't be running up and down the lanes all the time setting up pins. When, you, when we were pin did boys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> Got a good shot here. There. Whoops. Well, I guess you can all say I didn't need it anyway. <laughs> One of her friends up back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she heard it. So 118 to go along with her 114 gives her a 232. So. Week one's results are Rose Dowsett leading the pack with a 232, 1418. Mary Jo Dowsett, 108, 114 for 222. And these are the two ladies that will advance. Lisa McKay and Rhonda Olson both had 193 total. Candle pin challenge.